morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Just waiting to uh, start here in a few minutes. Got a few more people I know signed up. So uh, hello, Joel. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Gary. Hello, David. Hello, Samantha. Samuel, excuse me. Apologize for that. Linda and all the other ones joining in. We'll be starting here shortly. Hope you guys are all doing safe and sound. It's nice seeing beautiful blue skies outside. Unlike what we've been uh, going through the last couple of days, so hopefully the storms didn't affect anybody out there. I know we lost power at my house for about oh, four and a half, five hours, and uh, a lot of fun when that happens. So it always could be worse. Just like this country to get back to normal and get going again. So we'll start here in about two minutes. I think I got uh, <clears throat> eight more people still to come in and hopefully they'll join in as we go along. So we'll... morning, Fred, hope you're doing well. In the meantime, if you look to the far right of the screen, you will see a question mark. If you do have a question, feel free to get that question. Tap that in there. I'll answer your questions um, after the uh, presentation or we also have a handout screen over there on the right hand side um, to click as well for that and a chat button as well so still getting used to this virtual reality stuff it's beautiful here um, so I'm gonna give you guys the pleasure of taking my picture off the screen for that there but so we're gonna get going here <clears throat> Again, welcome everybody, and I hope everybody is safe and sound um, in these us presidents and times um, that we're going through right now. Um, family safe and doing so. Hopefully, we'll get back to America being on its way to recovery in here a short time. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Dolph Janice. I've been in the industry for about 17 years now and uh, seen quite a bit over the years, but I um, hope you can listen to my radio show every Saturday, still plugging along at 4 o'clock on WBT. Uh, a lot of education, and this is what this is all about today, is educating. We will be doing these presentations um, on different topics uh, every week on Tuesday at 11 o'clock and Thursday at 2 o'clock. Um, we've taken suggestions. We've had quite a bit of suggestions coming up for like next week's topic is uh, annuities, are they good or bad, and the differences between them. Um, we have a medical uh, presentation coming up in a couple weeks, so that's going to be an interesting one with Jeff Conyers will be joining us as well. Um, these are all the articles and I've been featured been fortunate enough to be written in. If there's a copy of any of them, you can go to our website. We'd be more than happy to get those to you. Um, before I forget, if you do want to sign up for any of the webinars, all you have to do is go to do not lose money.com. That's do not lose money.com. And uh, we'll have a list of all the upcoming webinars and sign in sheets there as well. Now, once again, I'm sure you all heard of the Mr. Ben Franklin. No one plans to fail. They just fail to plan. And it's an interesting uh, quote if you think about it because everybody wants to succeed in life. It's just sometimes it just, some things don't happen. Like right now we're having, they're, they're saying I'm approaching 20 million people filing for unemployment. They didn't, they didn't plan for that. It just happened that way. But sometimes they just procrastinate and they fail to plan. And this is what the whole presentation is about today. And I'm gonna start and finish it with this slide here is this is an interesting number that people look at. We've talked about it on my clear thoughts over the week is, when you get into retirement, and this is just an average 65-year-old couple for 20 years, the cost of retirement um, has a lot of risk involved to it. And mind you, this doesn't have anything to do with uh, the, the stock market. These are just actual average numbers that about a little over a million dollars is what a couple is going to need to get through with food and clothing and transportation, and shelter, health care, and taxes. These are some big numbers. And people look at those numbers and uh, we have a, a full spreadsheet we're more than happy to share with you to show you how these are broken down. But mind you, with it, talking inflation in here and you talk about market volatility, this can change a lot when it's going forward. And that's what we're gonna to discuss today. Six different steps to potentially help you consider, prepare and go into retirement or being in retirement already and prevent you from a bear market like this. I mean, we didn't, no one saw this coming. I mean, I looked at yesterday's numbers. The market was down 600, and today it's up 5, 600. So it's a roller coaster. Nobody knows what to expect. And number one, of course, you want to have a plan. And over the last 17 years, the people who planned that I've worked with are 
I feel like more likely to be confident they have a, the income in retirement composed of those who does, don't have a plan. And the thing is, is plans change. And like my family and I, we were supposed to go to Disney for my daughter's birthday and it got canceled because of this coronavirus. And so we had to come up with a backup plan. Well, now she's being homeschooled and so forth, but things just happen in life that we're not prepared for. Nobody saw this coming. And it's like I say on my radio show every week is, so what, now what? So what has happened? Now what are we going to do about it? Now, this isn't your grandfather's retirement anymore. Um, back in 1983, uh, some of you remember those where your nest egg was a smaller portion, and then you had Social Security, and then the pension was your big, your big caboodle. The pensions have been falling apart, and they've been going away and so forth. And now we're jumping all the way ahead to 2020, and nest egg is a big portion of your portfolio, the nest egg being your 401k, your Roth IRA, your traditional IRA, your SEP IRA, your savings account, your checking account, your annuities, your CDs, that's your, what you have to survive on. And Social Security has changed and that's going lower and then pensions are uh, few and far between um, when it comes to retirement, especially when the market like this where people are buying out pensions left and right. Now, when you get into retirement and you have to do this and you're going into trying to save money and then trying to now even more importantly, try to figure out your finances even more is what do you want your money to do? What do you want the money you have coming in to do versus what do you need the money to do? I know I said I flipped those around a little bit, but most people want their money to do a lot of good things, but they don't realize what they need their money to do first going forward. In retirement, what you need your money to do, obviously right now, and of course with the stimulus package, which I've gotten plenty of calls and I've actually done plenty of research. So if you do have any uh, questions on the stimulus package, I've actually become quite knowledgeable on that over the last couple of days, um, weeks with the, all the different plans, but anyhow, I mean, you need to pay your home expenses first and foremost, and then you pay your living expenses. And then, of course, the big is you got to pay your medical expenses if you have any. This is what you need to do with your money before going forward. Of course, when you, what you want your money to do is you want some people like to sail, and some people like to golf, and some people like to travel. Those are three big things is what you want to do. But if you don't take care of these, it's hard to get to these to take care of your loved ones. Now, this has always been a big topic, and of course, when it comes to right now, especially, is what is the stimulus package doing, and what is this virus doing to Social Security? And the answer is absolutely nothing. I mean, Social Security is what it is. I mean, it's on a little hold right now, but they're still paying out to you. I mean, the question is, do you want it to take it at 62, 66, and 70? Everybody's situation is different, and this is the most important thing about Social Security is I've come to find a lot of people take it at 62 just because they want the money now, but they don't need it, and they're giving up that 8% growth per year going forward. And then they wait and then they wait. Or other people are like, oh, I'm gonna wait till I'm 70 and because it gets maximum benefits. Well, a lot of things with social security is it's meant to subsidize your portfolio. It's not meant to live on your portfolio. And there's generally a bit between an eight and a 10 year difference between taking it every four years apart, breaking even so forth. Like if you take it at 62, versus 70, when you take it to 70, your break even point is around 78 years old. So when do you need the money more, between 62 and 70 or between 70 and 78? Again, everybody's situation's different. You have to ask yourself that. But commonly, for probably over 85%, according to different studies, your largest asset in retirement, it's either your pension, your 401k, your house, or social security. Most people will say either um, their 401k or their house, but generally, your highest asset in retirement is Social Security. Now, if you take a basic um, individual living in on uh, Social Security, they're going to get about, they live 20 years, they're going to get about $500,000. And if they're married, over a little over a million dollars over a 20 year time frame. Is your house worth a million? Is your 401k a million? If it is, congratulations, that's wonderful. But for most people, it's not. So utilizing Social Security the proper way is very important. And we're not going to talk about taxes really much in this presentation. But now with Social Security being taxed at once you hit $34,000 at 85%, you have to maximize how are you going to take Social Security and what your write-offs are going to be going forward. If you look at the difference in the benefit amounts of Social Security, and this is basically from 62 to 70, we have software we can run illustrations for you depending on where you're at in your lifetime. You just have to get your numbers from socialsecurity.gov uh, between 62 and 70 of the difference of money is me. This is just an average individual who at full retirement age would get $1,000. And you can see the difference between 62 and 70. It's almost close to double. 
But then the break even point is later. If you're 62 and you need that money right now, then absolutely take it. If you don't need it and you could subsidize through Roth IRAs and something else, absolutely take the increase. This guy's done pretty well for himself over the years. And Warren Buff and I always uh, love to coin take, coin take uh, coin phrase him, excuse me, on my radio show. But I mean, one of his favorite things that I've always liked him to say is rule number one, don't lose money. And rule number two, don't forget rule number one. Now, everybody, of course, wants to make as much money as they possibly can, as least amount of risk going forward. Warren Buffett has a very diversified portfolio, which you can go online and look at. And when you look at his portfolio, it's kind of interesting how it looks. But guess what? He has himself diversified for he follows rule number two, which follows rule number one. Now, this is going to talk a little bit about um, another one is inflation. This is a, a silent killer going forward. I mean, a lot of you guys on the call, and I recognize some of the people, you were around back in the day when, I mean, it's funny, a gas right now is at $1.50. So I actually got it for $1.52 the other day, where people are only filling their tank up once every two months now because you're not driving. I have a feeling when this thing's over, gas is going to explode again. But milk was cheap, ice cream was cheap, bread was cheap. And this thing said, you can take screenshots or um, of anything we present on here because it's all compliant approved, that um, how inflation can go depending on the inflation percentage going forward. If you just take a 2% inflation rate in 10 years, $10,000 is only going to be worth $8,200. So you have to consider that when you're taking your um, income in retirement. And also, mind you, if you're in a stock portfolio that dips, we have to go through another bear market, which eventually will have another bear market. God willing, it won't be caused by a virus. But that increases your inflation from 2% to whatever the market loss is on top of, on top of that as well. So one of the bigger ones when we get to this is when you start getting into the future years of your lifestyle, it's securing more guaranteed income. And number one reason for including sustainable predictable income is that we're living longer. And I know a lot of people out there when I ask questions like, how long do you think you're gonna live? The standard answer is between 80 and 84 years old. But I have Miss Alma who lives in New Jersey. I mean, she's 105 years old and she's still driving. I have clients in their 90s that are still playing golf. I mean, you just don't know. If you take care of yourself, which most of you guys do, I mean, you're going to live longer and you're going to be more active. And the more active you're going to get, you're going to need money. You don't want to be dependent on siblings or children or anything else to take care of you. You want to be taking care of yourself. So once this goes back to earlier slide is, what do you want your retirement income to do versus what do you need it to do? If you take care of your needs, your wants will come. But if you do your wants before your needs, you're setting yourself up for some trouble, especially again, if we suffer another bear market, because I mean, yeah, we went through a 30, 40% dip in a couple of weeks and it's come back a little bit. It's about halfway back, but I think this, there's still going to get worse before it gets better. I mean, there's still more dips to come. Unfortunately, I hope I'm wrong, but I think it could happen. Now there's only three guaranteed sources of income in retirement and a lot of people don't like them. I mean, you got pensions, you got social security, you got income annuities. And they're basically all three of them are an annuity. I mean, pensions are annuities backed by the company and social security is an annuity backed by the government and income annuities are backed by insurance companies. Now, if you find the right one for yourself and you get the right portfolio, getting your guaranteed income, let's say you had, let's just make it simple, a million dollar portfolio and you needed $50,000 a year and you use these three sources to get that $50,000 a year guaranteed, the rest of that money becomes play money and that money can be put towards medical expenses, long-term care, health insurance to take care of kids, and vacations, getting all those things that you do want in life. But the success in your retirement is really not about your assets. I mean, as you've seen in the past, assets can be lost, swindled, sued, God forbid, divorced, and the worst is decimated in a market crash. And now we live in a very age where everybody has this mind frame of everything's going to come back. It's going to come back. Well, how long is it going to take to come back? As we talked about last week's webinar, it's generally about a four to four to five year fully recovery before everything gets back to normal. And the best way to go forwards is not to go backwards. And if you're a golfer out there, I mean, sometimes you have to go sideways to get to where you need to go. And that's ultimately getting to the pin because you don't necessarily always have to go to the hole to succeed on any given golf hole. Sometimes you watch these professionals out there and they know what they're doing. I mean, look at 17 over at Quail Hollow. I mean, if that pin's front left, they're, every one of them's hitting it on the right side. I mean, they're not going for the gusto. They're going for safety. And that's what retirement is about. That's what your money is about, is safety. I mean, it's mostly going to get your 
success in retirement will depend a lot on the guaranteed income. I mean, I, I beat that down. I know that's what I do for a living, but how many people in my life that when they're getting that check every single month, they know they're getting that check, how their stress level goes down. And like I said, when I, I talk about this all the time, when I was an altar boy, when I was young, as Father Mentor always told me, he's like, Dolph, every day you're not angry, you're not upset, you're not lonely, you're not stressed, it's a day of happiness. And it's a minute of happiness you're not taking away from yourself. And so the more risk you can take off the table, the better. And again, I'm going to use golf because there's a lot of golfers out there. And if you're not a golfer, I apologize for using these analogies. But when you got water out there and you got sand and these trees out there, you've got to eliminate those from your next shot. And sometimes the best way to go through something is to go around it. That's the same thing when it comes to your portfolio. Sometimes the best way to beat the market is to go around the market. Now, there's, these are the most common 10 of the 11 risks that I always people need to write down. We have uh, paperwork and uh, sources that we could go through each one of these in more detail. I'll be more than happy to send them if you request it. But you got deflation risk. You got, of course, the big one, market risk, withdrawal rate risk, sequence of return risk, which we'll be covering in a couple of weeks, long-term care risk, mortality, inflation, regulatory, taxation, and behavioral risk. And a lot of people say, well, Dolph, what is behavioral risk? And we talked about that last week a little bit. Behavioral risk is the way that you look at it. Are you a procrastinator? Or are you a go-getter? Or are you a, just a spur-of-the-moment kind of person? And sometimes the way that you behave with your money is making snap decisions, buying something because you want it, not because you need it, can really hurt you. But the number one risk when it comes to your future is longevity. I mean, there's a couple things in this world I know for a fact, in my opinion, being religious. I know there's a God and I'm not him. And the one answer that nobody can answer in this world is, when am I going to die? It's just nobody knows that answer. And God forbid it's a, or God willing, it's a long time from now. But it's biggest, uh, biggest hands down, the number one risk in retirement. It's not just a risk, it's a multiplier. Because if you look at <clears throat> longevity risk and you're living, the longer you're, you're living, guess what? Your inflation goes higher, your tax ration gets hurt, your long term care increases, your market risk increases. It's a multiplier to every single one of those. So how do you take it off the table? I mean, a lot of people love real estate and they've been doing well in real estate over the years, except for 2008, 9, and 10. And they like to do their managed money themselves. They're like one of those self-employed people or they, they want to do CDs. But guess what? Those, those things can't take longevity off the table because they're not guaranteed. And I know you don't like this, but an income annuity can take that off. It's, it's great for a portion of your money that you want to take the longevity risk off the table because it's money that you can never outlive even if it goes to zero. Now, a lot of objections are to lifetime uh, income annuities is why would I buy an income annuity when rates are 50, at a 50 year low? I have a great article we just posted, Lauren posted on uh, social media. Now it's a great time because you're getting in at the bottom floor. So you're getting upside potential without the downside risk. You're getting the inflation increasing rider that has on every one of these annuities that you can get in, in increasing income as you go through. Why would I want to do it with inflation? Well, because this protects against inflation. Most people say, well, I don't want to tie my money up. Well, you're not tying your money up. You're protecting it. You're guaranteeing it. It's, it's right for a portion of your portfolio, but it's not right for all your portfolio. It's right for what you want to do, whether you're looking for growth for tomorrow, you're looking for lifetime income, or you want to pass it on to your beneficiaries. Guaranteed. It's a very important thing. I mean, uh, my associate Jeff and I have been doing a lot of videos on common objections of um, annuities. If you go to our annuitiesbad.com, you can see Jeff and I, uh, we've done, I think, about 15 or 20 videos now on different objections and whether they're good or bad. We, we're covering both sides of the basis. But at the end of the day, it's protection. And my forecast for 2020 has been thrown out the window. I mean, I had great amb ambitions in January when I did my State of the Union. I'm going to be posting another one this week on this weekend because things have changed. I mean, no one thought a virus was coming. And we all thought and saw a bear market coming of some sort of some kind of small correction but god forbid we never knew that we'd lose a lot of these lives and all this stuff going on now so right now we have an election year coming up and we have trump on one side and we have mr biden on the other side we don't know who's going to win because there's a lot of different uh views out there but in, if you look deep into your heart and you realize okay who if trump wins what's going to happen going forward and if biden wins what happens going forward you have to be prepared for both of them. I mean, I have my personal objective, but I don't talk politics when I'm talking to people. I mean, I have my personal beliefs, but I'm not talking politics. But I truly believe if one side wins, taxes are going to go up. 
um, inflation is going to go up and it's going to be a shaky ride. If the other one goes up, it's going to be a bunch of battling. It's going to be a bunch of here we go again. So protecting your money now, not to go backwards, is very important because who's to say that another, we're not going to get another 10, 12 year bull market like we just had. I mean, we might, we can't say never, we just can't, might, but the odds are against it. So if you protect what you want to protect now, it can only help out going forward. I mean, assets are great in retirement, but I've seen a lot of people with a lot of money that are miserable in retirement because they don't know how to handle their assets where lifetime income will make you happy. And I'm going to use a different uh, scenario and I'm going to use, I'm going to pick on my parents for a second. Um, my dad is very conservative as an engineer. I mean, mind you, they've been divorced for a very long time. Um, and he's all about living on a fixed, if you, you know anything about engineers, they know uh, they like to live on a certain budget and stuff. And that's what he has his income. He has annuities and stuff to um, guarantee what he has coming in. And he's very frugal with his money, but he lives his lifestyle the way he wants. He still travels a lot. Well, my mom has a decent amount of money as well, but she has it all in the market and with different brokers and stuff because she doesn't mix business with pleasure. But she's miserable because she really, she sees one day it's up, one day it's down. And it makes her nervous and some days she's afraid to spend money the next day it goes up and she spends money so that's why i'm saying assets can make you miserable because if they're not controlled properly in your portfolio all it can do is cause you misery and disbelief going forward like oh it's going to come back it's come back and next thing you know it you're 65 then you're 70 and then you're not going to do those those trips to disney world you're not going to get those uh traveling trips or those uh, golf rounds in and stuff and that's where if you have the guaranteed income coming through you're, you're getting that stuff for yourself now I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, we're going to have a, a more webinar on this in a couple of weeks, but long-term medical costs. And the average couple, 65 years old, who lives 20 years in retirement, is going to spend, oh, just uh, just a little under uh, $400,000 in medical costs. And how do you plan for those medical costs? Well, there are agents, like we said, we have an agent here, Jeff, and we have other people that can give you ideas on how to sustain your medical costs. Because your, your three phases when you hit retirement, is you got your go-go years, you got your slow-go years, and then you got your no-go years. And the no-go years, you should never happen. I mean, they really shouldn't. At worst, you should get your slow-go years where you're slowing down a little bit, but you're still doing what you want to do. But the people that have long-term care coverage, people that have medical cost coverage, people that have medical annuities, people that have medical money put aside and have the proper insurance, they can go go-go all the time and, and maybe go a little slow-go at some times because they're not worried about having to deplete their portfolio for medical costs. Because honestly, I think personally off the record, medical costs are only going to get more expensive, especially with this pandemic going on. And hopefully we, once we get a cure, I mean, they're going to have to get their money back somehow. So when you're looking at medical costs, look at yourself as, hey, do you want to be that couple riding that bike on the right-hand side and doing go-go, not worrying about their costs? Or you want to be that young lady on the bottom just like saying, oh, now what am I going to do? Or even worse, the one in the little uh, triangle right there just saying, well, we're just stuck here because we didn't plan properly for the unknown. And that's what this is right now. We are in a situation of the unknown. And the last thing when you're going about surviving a benefit for a bear market or living your life is um, I'm sure a lot of you have children, um, spouses, most importantly, if you're married. Um, or children or grandchildren and stuff. And this was important to some people and not important to others, but leaving a legacy. I mean, if you look back to your parents when they passed away, if they passed away, hopefully they're still living, is did they leave you a legacy and how good did it do for you? And some people don't like life insurance, but that's what it's for. It's life insurance is to make sure an efficient way to pass wealth on to your children, grandchildren, or charities. I have a lot of people, uh, Professor Davidson has a huge life insurance policy to give to Davidson when he gets back. Some people pick animal shelters and whatever. I mean, but make sure that it's something that you love and it's really not that expensive. Um, and on a side note, I don't know if you guys know what the stimulus package for any of you that are taking RMDs out currently right now. I didn't know if you saw the announcement that you are no, the year 2020, they are bypassing 2020 RMDs. So you do not have to take out your RMDs in uh, this year and you will not be penalized for that. And the only reason I say that is a lot of people do use their RMDs to fund long-term care insurance or fund life insurance. I mean, you make the most of the legacy gifts. I mean, you got a leverage against assets increased for your grandchildren. I mean, if you're married with four children and six grandchildren and you have a CD that grows at 2% annually at death, the CD to the grandchildren is 16,000. There are other options out there to pass on your money to them. And it's whole life insurance. It's a great thing to get a quote for it. 
builds cash value, has a tax-free death benefit for it. I'm not going to preach about it, but it's just something to think about getting a whole life policy or at least getting a quote and seeing if it's right for you. But then again, the people start doing this and I'm craving tacos. Don't get my wife's from Mexico. So, I mean, she, we're dying to have some tacos. We can't find it right now because everything's closed, but you don't want to talk about it. I mean, people, when they have their money is I'm, I'm, I'm procrastinating. I don't want to talk about my money right now. I don't want to touch my principal. I don't want to give up control. Well, you're not giving up control when you're protecting something. And when you protect, like you said, you're not going to give up control of your family. You're giving up to protect your family. And then it's not liquid. What if I need my money? Well, great. Talked to this gentleman uh, from the radio. We did a virtual because I'm doing virtual appointments right now. He had a $400,000 IRA and he was 66 years old. And he says, this is my biggest asset. And I, we were talking about different options and so forth. He goes, what if I need my money right now? I'm like, well, in 66 years, what's the biggest check you've ever paid to yourself? And he says, well, I bought a car once for 22000 And I said, going forward, if, if you think you're going to need more than 22000 at one time and you have access to um, $80,000 of this money at any time, which was 20% liquidity, why wouldn't you want to do something like that? Because you're not going to need all your money at one time because you, you cash out a $400,000 IRA, just the taxes alone is going to chop off 35 40%. So your money is always liquid as long as you do liquidity for today, growth for tomorrow, and income for life. You all set out all three of them. And that goes about the whole thing is we have a retirement kit that Lauren and, and I, and we put together, we'd be more happy to share with you. Just have to email us or give us a call. We'd be more than happy to send this retirement kit. And it's a great kit about planning versus guessing. It just has on one side, all the things you want to plan on versus, and then it has another side where basically guessing as I, I use as your wants, what's your money going to do? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? It's a great resource to see where you're at. Cause a lot of people, if you look at your portfolio, it's like, well, I got, I'm spending $5,000 a month, but how much do you have coming in? And they're like, well, I have 7,000. Well, great. You have 7,000 coming in. Then once you do your numbers, you're not getting $5,000. You're actually like, you're spending $8,000 a month. That's the guessing part. Never guess, always know for sure. So just take this home in this. When you're, if you're interested in an annuity or just getting a quote, great. If you're not, no big deal. But it's something you want to consider for income. I mean, because it takes off longevity risk. It takes away market risk. It takes away withdrawal rates. It takes away sequence return risk. I mean, we have annuities right now over the last five weeks that have actually gone up 4.5% and the market's still down. And that's pretty incredible. And then you have your guaranteed income riders. So if these risks are something that you're concerned about, longevity risk, market risk, withdrawal risk, just uh, consider an, an annuity for yourself or another protection type vehicle out there at the same time. Now, I want to get put the screen back up here again, because after everything we've talked about, I want you to understand of everything we're going through, how much money you're spending on food and being, being aware of where your money is being spent. And mind you, this doesn't take into fact of vacations. It doesn't take in fact gifts, luxury items, entertainment, dining out or legacy. Uh, this is just a very good screenshot of saying, okay, where's this money going to come from? And Social Security can take care of a lot of this, but it doesn't take care of the rest of it. And that's where it's really important for you. Um, I encourage you guys to, at the end of the day, I mean, if you would like to have more knowledge from us or like more resources, we have on the right side again, so there's a tab over there that's all the different resources. There's probably, I don't know, Lauren, probably tell you like, 12 to 20 different resources, books, articles, and programs that we'd be more than happy to share for you complimentary um, if you'd like to talk to because we like to work with people who want to improve their life and they want to protect their net worth. That's the people we like to work with. We're, if you look on the other side, we don't work with those people on the other side. I mean, I'm, I appreciate you guys all listening today. We do have, if you are on fa Facebook or social media, please follow us on Facebook. Um, we also have a newsletter that goes out monthly and updates on everything going out forward. Uh, all you have to do is email, question, or chat for us going forward, and we'd be more than happy to share any of that stuff for you. Um, again, I appreciate everyone taking the time out of their morning to uh, listen to my presentation. If you have any questions or you'd like to chat, please give me a call or um, shoot me an email. I mean, we're doing virtual appointments through GoToMeetings right now. But most importantly, I wish each one of you safety and health and prosperity going forward and um, doing our part to get this thing over with so we can get back enjoying our life. So. Once again, God bless every one of you guys for listening today. I truly hope to talk to each one of you shortly. And uh, please go to donotlosemoney.com for upcoming seminars and questions. And I would really appreciate anybody who had any different topics we wanted to cover on webinars. We'd be more than happy to put one together for you. 
You guys take care again. Thanks very much.